Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of videos on physical metallurgy and solid state science. The topic of this video is the ductile to brittle transition temperature, above which materials change their fracture mode from brittle to ductile. This transition depends on factors such as the temperature of their usage condition and the rate at which a load is applied, and can have catastrophic consequences for the engineer or solid state physicist if not taken into account during component design. Let's learn something today. For this lab, we fulfilled the following objectives. Understand the effect of temperature on the fracture mode of a material. Determine the brittle to ductile transition temperature plot. Understand the relationship between material composition and type of fracture in plain carbon steels. And operate a Sharpie impact test. As far as equipment and supplies, we are provided with Sharpie specimens, specifically 1018 and 1045 alloy steel, both hot and cold rolled a Sharpie impact tester with assistance from Dr. Kingsbury, thermometers, calipers, glass beakers, tongs, an electric hot plate, a furnace, a salt and ice mixture, dry ice and ethanol or liquid nitrogen, masking tape and metal stampers for identifying each sample. Ductile to brittle transition temperature, also known as DBTT. As materials temperature increases, a transition of the failure mechanism from a brittle to more ductile type of fracture occurs. The transition temperature is dependent on the material's chemical composition and bonding, microstructure, and environment of the testing. From DBTT tests, it is helpful to determine the cause of any structural failures. Ductile fracture is a type of fracture from plastic deformation with slow propagation of cracking occurs until fracture. The fracture appears dull and rough. Most ductile fractures can be characterized by formations of a cup and cone shape. The mechanism in metals is dislocation motion and in ceramics is atomic diffusion. A reduction in cross-section area of the test materials result from the large amount of energy expended on propagating the crack. When a specimen's temperature increases, it increases the breaking and reforming of atomic bonds to relieve the strain. Brittle fracture occurs when a rapid crack propagates in the material until little or no plastic deformation until fracture. The appearance of the fracture is smooth and shiny due to its intergranular nature. Decreasing temperatures of material are increasing or increasing the strain rate will increase the likelihood of a brittle fracture. There is little to no reduction in cross-sectional area Brittle fracture is characterized by the term cleavage fracture. Less energy is expended to grow a crack and brittle fractures. In this lab, we will be using seven different samples, each of which are about 1 cm by 1 cm by 5 cm. Each sample will be subjected to various temperatures, including liquid nitrogen, a dry ice ethanol mixture, a saltwater ice bath, an ice bath, boiling water, a furnace, and room temperature. Once they reach the desired temperature, the samples are placed in the Sharpie impact tester with the notch facing away from the pendulum. The pendulum is then released and allowed to collide with the sample. The impact energy required to fracture the sample is measured and used to determine the ductile to brittle transition temperature. Here is a video of one of the samples being tested with the Sharpie impact tester with assistance from Dr. Dallas Kingsbury. Here are the data obtained from the experiment displaying measurements of the samples before and after the impact test. Microsoft Excel has a built-in formula for calculating the standard deviation which simplifies data analysis. It is also possible to use Microsoft Excel to round or truncate data to the correct number of significant figures. As always, when using a computer to store your data, it is a good idea to keep a copy backed up externally in case of any problems. Our samples show a 17.6% reduction in cross-sectional area, which is fairly significant. By combining this reduction in area with the impact energy expended, it's even possible to estimate the Poisson's ratio of the material. In the next slide, the results of the impact energy expended to fracture the sample as a function of sample temperature are presented. As you can see, these are, this is a plot done in MATLAB. Uh, Tuesday's group did the 1018 steel. And Thursday's group did the 1045. 
and comparing the two you can see that the 1018 still has a higher dbtt compared to the 1045 uh, this just shows how much uh, the carbon composition affects the dbtt curve in summary after testing samples at a variety of temperatures, we discovered that both the 1018 and 1045 steel alloys experienced a ductile to brittle transition at a temperature of approximately negative 20 degrees Celsius. In theory, the 1045 alloy should have a higher DBTT than the 1018 due to the greater carbon content of the 1045 alloy, but the curves were not smooth enough to make this distinction. A greater number of data points could be taken to more accurately determine the DBTT of each alloy of steel. The ductile to brittle transition temperature is an important property to include in material selection. For some applications, it can result in a preferred failure mechanism. For some components operating near their failure point, necking behavior can oftentimes be noticed through visual inspection, allowing for replacement of the part before it fails in service. Such inspection is a vital part of aircraft maintenance. Even our recent Oscar winner Leonardo DiCaprio has some experience with the effect of brittle failure. New evidence suggests that the steel used to build the Titanic had a shortage of manganese, which resulted in a high DBTT, meaning that the ship could have been in its brittle failure mode when it contacted the iceberg. This is important because if the steel had been in its ductile regime, more energy could have been absorbed before cracking of the hull occurred, potentially saving the lives of those on board. A similar effect was seen in the polymeric O-rings of the space shuttle Challenger. These O-rings had a functionality that required flexibility, but were operated at a temperature where they were rigid, leading to death. Since small changes in elemental composition can vary the failure mechanism at a particular temperature, one mechanism material scientists can use to extend the range of a material's functionality is by alloying it with other elements. When reviewing experiments, it is advantageous to see how it is possible to improve them. One great method of improving your experiments without fundamentally changing them is by reducing the sources of error. One source of error in this experiment was the fact that the temperature of the sample was taken several seconds before the test occurred. This means that due to thermal diffusion, the temperature of the samples at the time of fracture were actually closer to room temperature than the temperature recorded on the thermometer. Additionally, this error is not present in the same extent in all samples. The coldest liquid nitrogen samples would warm up by a greater temperature than the samples chilled in ice water. The rate of temperature change depends on the difference in temperature between the sample and the ambient temperature. One interesting way of possibly reducing this problem could be achieved by partially surrounding the sample with insulating material. Other sources of error in this experiment were due to imperfections in the tester setup and measuring errors. Thank you for your time. We will be back with more experimental videos soon.